intangibles. And by tangibles, I mean things like proper logos, colors, signage, and then also intangibles. Those are things that, you know, how do people see us? How are we, um, you know, what is our demeanor like in our own offices? How do we create positive branding and marketing through our personal interactions with our clientele? So those are some of the things we're going to be discussing today. Like I said, please feel free to chime in if at any time, um, you know, that you've got a question and um, and stop me or right there in the conversation area and we'll try to get that question answered as we go. So I'm going to flip over and um, present my desktop here. We're going to go here. Okay, give it just a minute. All right, can you all see um, the branding NDSU extension title slide? Is that showing up for everyone? Yep, wonderful. Thanks, Amelia. All right, so to get started, now you you thought you were just coming to uh, listen to me <laughs> talk about branding today, but you didn't know that you're going to be doing a little bit of work as well. So to get us started... Um, if you happen to have a sheet of paper in front of you, or if you just want to do this um, in your mind, that's great <laughs> as well. But if you've got a pe piece of paper in front of you, I'd like you to grab that and uh, section it off into four sections. Um, and in the very first section, I want you to just take a few seconds, maybe 15 seconds, to write down any words that come to mind when you think about NDSU as a whole, as a college. Um, when you hear the words NDSU, what are some words that might come to mind? So I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to do that, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Looks like Calla says she can't hear me or see my presentation anymore. Is anybody else having that problem? Okay. Okay, it looks like uh Cal, I hope you get that hope that taken get that taken care of. Let us know if you keep having problems. But okay, so hopefully you've written down a few words that come to mind when you think about NDSU as the college as a whole. And then in your next section, um, I'd like you to take a few seconds to write down any words that come to mind when you think about NDSU extension, one of our RECs, or maybe if you're in a specific department like the plant science department, I want you to write down so many words that, any words that come to mind when you think about um, any of those as a whole. Okay, hopefully you've got a few words written down, and then um, then take a few more seconds to write down any words that come to mind when you think about your specific office as a whole and the environment and its environment. So whether that's your county extension office or a specific REC that you work in, or um, if you work in one of our departments here on campus um, and you kind of have a group, um, you know, of, of people all in an office together. Please write down any words that come to mind when you think about the environment in that office. All 
All right. So before we go forward, does um, would anybody like to share? Does anyone have any um, any of the words that came to mind on any of those sections? And specifically, did anyone write down the same thing in each of um, or one or two similar words for each of those quadrants that we just that we just put words in? Amelia Dahl wrote education. That's great. Great word to describe extension. Integrity. That's wonderful, Tom. Teamwork from Cala. Stacy says research. Betsy says agriculture. Those are great. Those are all wonderful words to describe um, multiple segments of extension. So um, I want you to kind of keep those in mind, and we're going to go forward here. We're going to talk about um, what is a brand. And um, I'm happy to see that Glenn um, Muskie is here on this call as well. He just wrote a really um, wonderful um, column this week. In fact, I have it cut out of the newspaper, and um, it's it's up on a magnet behind me if you can want to see my video. But it's about the difference between marketing and branding. So today we're just going to be talking about the brand side of that. And so um, I like to think of a brand as a promise to the people we serve. Um, you know, in extension and within um, the College of Agriculture, we have a multitude of clientele. And so whether that clientele um, is on the agriculture, traditional agriculture side of things, or um, whether that's someone, you know, that uses our resources at one of our parent resource centers, our master gardeners, you know, you know whoever it is and however, however they're using extension, we hope that they see us as a source of education. Um, we hope that we serve all classes of people, all genders, races, ethnicities, um, ages. We hope that the extension service, that the brand, um, that when they see um, our logo or um, go to one of our programs, that um, you know that we that they know that they are receiving quality uh, education and research, and that they come away with a positive experience. So let's examine a little bit of our brand. So who are we? Well, at the base level, um, we are educators and researchers and scientists. Um, we're an educational network that helps North Dakotans improve their quality of life. Um, at the core, we can do that on a community level, and then we work, can even work our way up to the state and national level. Our um, NDSU Extension Service um, you know, conducts national programs that people can learn from, not just community programs, but at the core, we are on a county level and we try to serve our citizens on that community level. And so that's who we are at our core. And what do we do? Well, we provide answers to complex problems. I'm not telling you all anything you don't know, but, um, you know, we do research. We put on youth programs, health and nutrition programs. Why does it matter? Well, for each of us and for each of the clientele that we serve, that answer is different. Um, the um, person that's employed by our research extension centers that's sole job is to, um, you know, work on pest control in wheat or something of that nature, um, they have a very different answer than the person that maybe works at one of our parent resource, um, parent resource centers. Um, and so, you know, that clientele is different. Our, the why does it matter for us as employees and the why does it matter to our clientele is different for each of us. Um, but we hope that it all starts with extending knowledge. Um, to further examine our brand and why we should examine our brand, um, it has to do with defining the NDSU Extension Service image. And by doing that, we define our culture and what um, professionalism means to each of us. We know that strong brands are built by consistent delivery. So, um, you know, across all of our units and among our employees. So that's using appropriate logos, um, putting up the appropriate signage in places so that people can associate our logo and our colors and our people with the education that we provide. Um, we also need to be persistent in that strategy. So everything that comes out of our office having the appropriate logos, um, you know, can help build our brand. And then also being genuine in our communication with clientele, um, you know, by 
having their best interests at heart, we create a positive view of the NDSU Extension Service. So that's just a little bit about our NDSU Extension Service brand. Um, now I'm going to talk about what I call tangible branding. And um, what I mean by that are things that, um, like our logos, our signage, things that people see, can feel, can touch, that um, brand us as a whole. So um, a few of the things that you see there on our screen, of course, is our NDSU Extension Service logo, um, the header of our Facebook page, and then um, also um, a little infographic that we had used on Facebook back in January that all, um, you know, help tie, things like this help tie um, our image together um, using the appropriate colors, the appropriate logos um, to help get pe people get a sense of who we are. So now I'm going to take you to the new branding and communications um, page. And just to give you a little bit of an example or just a, a little bit of background, about a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, a committee was put together of um, extension colleagues across the state in all disciplines to um, start to think about, um, you know, how we can do a better job of branding the extension service. And so up to this point, we have put together a brand new web page that encompasses all things branding and communications. We hope that it becomes employees kind of one stop shop for any questions related to um, logos, signage, um, you know, even what your email signature should look like or how you should answer the phone, anything having to do with branding and marketing of the extension service um, is going to be located on this page. So that's the first thing we've put together and we're continuing to work on um, other ways to brand extension. So this uh, new web page just came out about uh, a month or two ago. And so I'm going to we're going to go there, and I'm going to take you through some of the things that I think are interesting to note on this website. So hopefully this uh, goes through. Go. All righty. So hopefully you all are seeing um, the Branding and Communications webpage. It can be found under the For Employees section of um, the NDSU Extension Service um, page. You can also get there by going to, um, it's also under the Agriculture Communications um, uh, homepage as well. Um, so it's in multiple places to find, but um, some of the best, your best bet is under the four employees section of the NDSU Extension Service homepage. So um, the page starts out with a little bit of information about branding, about how it's not just a logo or a website design or a tagline. Um, but it's a feeling or an ex expectation or relationship that accounts for how the public feels about us as a whole. Um, so some of the things I'll take, kind of take you through here on this website. Um, first um, is a video about professionalism that was done by Deb Gebicki. And if you haven't had a chance to watch it, it's about, I think it's about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, it's one of the first things that, as a new employee, that I went and looked at, but I think that it's also um, something I should probably watch every single year because it's a great reminder um, about uh, being professional and how um, our attitudes and, and the way we look and the way we carry ourselves, um, you know, portrays an image of NDSU extension. So if you haven't had a chance to watch this yet, I encourage you to go back and do that sometime. Um, it's a great video that um, Deb does a wonderful job on. So please go take a look at that if you get a chance to. But um, also you'll see that um, the general NDSU as a whole branding guidelines um, are linked here. Um, just recently they put together um, a PDF of, they, they also have their own branding guidelines website, but they um, just put together a PDF that came out a couple of months ago that I think um, does a really nice job of explaining um, some of the things that we see all the time um, in terms of appropriate logo usage. Um, it's kind of neat to scroll through here and see what is allowed and what is not allowed, things like you know, the NDSU seal is not in interchangeable with the actual NDSU logo. Um, a lot of times I see the athletic, 
athletic mascot being used, um, and that's something that we definitely have to stay away from. That's property of the athletic department. Um, I've seen a lot of these older type logos on um, some uh, web pages. Um, let's see here. Like I said, this is just kind of a neat PDF document to go through it that kind of gives us gives you some guidelines on how um, our logo should be used, and it applies to our own county extension logos in terms of you know not stretching them out, not um, trying to recreate them with a different um, font. You know, those are all things that are addressed in this NDSU branding guidelines PDF. Um, we have guidelines for standard email signatures and what those should look like. Got some guidelines there. Um, appropriate extension service logos are also listed. Um, one of the things that I didn't uh, know about till I had been here for a few months, but if you are working out in one of our counties or RECs and you're needing um, a copy of your logo, there is um, a section here where you can go get your own county logo or the NDSU Extension Service logo, and we offer it in multiple formats. So however you need that, whether you need it um, for a printed piece or on a web page or a Facebook page, um, we offer multiple formats for that, both color and black and white, I believe. So those resources are available for each county. Go back to page here. Um, one of the things that, after giving this presentation at the support staff conference, um, Linda Schuster had asked me a question about um, including the equal opportunity um, language on some of the things that we send out and ask if that was available. And I believe I can go back and find that. Not enclosures. Here. Oh, okay. Um, under the newsletters, brochures, reports section, I believe it's here. Yes, so if you're putting together a printed piece such as this and you're looking for that information, the NDSU non discrimination statement is there for your use, along with information about accommodations and how that should be listed. Go back here. Um, some things that we also offer, um, which some of you might not be aware of, is we do have PowerPoint templates um, You know, for our agents that are putting on programs and classes. If you'd like to make sure that your um, PowerPoint presentation um, you know, looks super spiffy. This is the way to do it. We've got multiple templates for you to download here. Um, if you have questions about um, how to answer the phone with a professional greeting, um, we address that as well. Um, you know, all types of other educational sources, resources, um, you know, how to prepare a message for the media, um, uh, photo release forms, uh, news release guidelines. Ellen and Becky have done a wonderful job over the years of putting together guidelines for news releases. So if you're submitting something to your local or your county newspaper, um, this is a great resource to come and check out some of this information to make sure that um, newspapers will want to use your news releases. So these are just a few of the things that are um, you know, listed on our new branding and communications guidelines page. Um, a lot of these you can drill down, you know, this is just the outer page and you can drill down a lot farther into, um, you know, things that you might have questions on. But like, like I said, we hope that this will be um, your resource for all things related to that, especially um, we hope that new employees, you know, if you're out in the county and you have a new employee joining you, we we're you know hiring a lot of people at this time. Um, you know we hope that you'll show them this page so that they can answer, you know hopefully answer some of the questions that they have, um, you know related to these topics. So that's a little bit about our new branding and communications 
website. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint now. Let's see here. So after seeing some of those things, let's see here. There we go. So where are some places that we can use tangible branding? Anything from, um, you know, flyers with our logos on them. You know, here are some of the places that we need to make sure to um, use appropriate logos and appropriate colors and appropriate um, signage. So those could be in our news releases, newsletters, um, both print and digital. Um, so anytime we're, you know, putting something out on social media um, or an online uh, newsletter, we want to make sure to have the proper logos and, and signage and colors and all those things. Um, maybe it's in, I have a picture here of a bulletin board, you know, that's kind of the quintessential um, place in a lot of our counties where news gets passed around, whether that's outside your local sale barn or at a community center, your convenience store, um, you know, those are places where people stop and look and read and um, if you've got an upcoming program or class going on, make sure to put a flyer there and make sure to put um, your county logo on there so people know um, who's putting on that class and where they can find more information. Um, I, didn't, um, sh I didn't show you in our branding and communications webpage, but we also have signage as, that can be checked out as well. So if you've got a program coming up and you want to make sure to have, um, you know, a neat background or something that, um, you know, you know, is a big focal point at your meeting or program, we have those signs available to check out and we can hopefully find you a ride, um, you know, for that signage as well. Um, apparel, anything from NDSU Extension Service um, shirts and jackets, um, those are great ways to brand ourselves and so that people know who we are and who we work for. Um, you know, like I said, whatever meetings, programs, classes you have coming up, make sure that, you know, any of your handouts, things of that nature also have our logo on them as well. So those are places for what I call tangible branding. So now we're going to talk about intangible branding, and those are the, the feelings, the attitudes, um, you know, how we make our clientele feel. So in the very last quadrant of your piece of paper that we originally started with, I want you to write down a few words that um, hopefully define you in your professional, in a professional setting. Give you a few seconds to do that. Would anybody like to share um, if they've got um, some words that both define, that, some words that define you and your office and the NDSU Extension Service? Amelia says youth people. That's great. Inclusive and respectful. That's wonderful, Tom. Definitely. Anyone else want to chime in? Curious. Great. Cindy Clapridge says, friendly, cheerful, helpful, and productive. I definitely think you're those things, Cindy. <laughs> helpful and encouraging, says Betsy. Wonderful. So definitely, we hope that, um, you know, it's always my hope that um, through my interactions with people that um, once they find out that I work for the NDSU Extension Service and what department I work in, I hope that they um, 
see myself and my department and eventually the NDSU Extension Service as a whole as a source of education, as friendly. Um, you know, those are all things that, you know, I hope come across in my dealings with people. So let's <laughs> move on a little bit. Um, I thought this next slide, I, I have, I make no, um, I have no opinions, <laughs> or at least none that I'm going to share on this webinar, but um, I just thought these are both uh, pictures that, you know, illustrate how our demeanor and our facial expressions and um, even our voice tone um, say things about us that, um, you know, that uh, people definitely pick up on. So whether that's, um, you know, I even think on the phone, you know, if you have a sour tone or a sour look to your face, that even comes across over the phone, whether you recognize it or not. And I thought these were two, um, you know, kind of funny photos that uh, illustrate, um, you know, some points about facial expressions and, and tone. So let's talk about some other um, intangible branding items. So our attire, what we wear, how people see us, um, you know, in our professional lives definitely makes a difference. Um, you know, m multiple people or a lot of you know that my mom had been a family and consumer science extension agent in our rural, very rural Oklahoma for almost 40 years. And um, I always laughed that even on a you know, Saturday morning, if she was just getting up and going to the grocery store, um, she made sure to uh, look her best because she knew that uh, no matter what, even in the grocery store, people, um, you know, associate her with, um, you know, the extension service. And she uh, <laughs> wanted to look their best. And she said she even was nervous about certain things she put in her grocery cart because she knew that as people strolled by in the grocery store, they take a peek into her cart to see if she was actually eating the healthy food that she, you know, talked about in many of her programs. So we always got a kick out of that. And so our attire and how we present ourselves out in the public, um, you know, definitely makes a difference, especially when in our in some small communities when people know who we work for. So how about our workspace? I've got two photos up there. You know, what do those two photos say about, um, you know, uh, the type of you know, productive employee we are. Now, I'll admit that even the most productive employees could still have a messy desk. It's not about um, having a clean desk, but um, it can help with the, to look um, organized and professional if we keep our desk and work area um, free of clutter. Going back to facial expressions, the ones that I, um, the two photos that I had in the previous slide, you know, a smile does so much for people. And so um, keeping our um, facial expressions positive when we, you know, how many of us have ever walked up to a counter, whether that's, um, you know, fast food or um, any type of service counter, and the person at that counter looks up and from their work or maybe even doesn't look up as soon as you step up to the counter and the instant feeling that you receive that you are not valuable or that they are not listening um, you know, that says so much about, you know, a business when the, the, pers the first person, you know, on the front lines, when you walk into a county office or into one of our departments, if that person has a friendly demeanor and a smiling face, um, that goes um, so far in people's perceptions of us um, as the NDSU Extension Service. The way we speak, um, you know, voice tone also um, has a lot to do with how we are perceived and um, one of the things I like to employ is um, smiling when I answer the phone even though they can't see me um, just um, smiling while talking um, puts off such a pleasant tone and and really goes a long way in making sure the person on the other end of the line knows that I think that their call is valuable and of course our attitudes and behaviors um, you know having a positive attitude go so far in our interactions with people and our clientele and, um, you know, no matter what's happening kind of in our personal lives, um, putting that, you know, aside as we um, help people in their day-to-day -day and hopefully provide them with the answers that they're seeking and the um, education that they're needing, um, you know, goes really far in terms of their view of the NDSU Extension Service. 
So I believe that a good brand combines both tangibles and intangibles. Um, everything from, you know, having, like I said, proper logos and using the correct colors and um, having an email signature that um, is consistent with our image and answering the phone correctly all go um, a long way towards a positive brand strategy and people seeing NDSU Extension Service as the um, quality educational network that it is. So why is this important? Well, you can't hit the erase button. Once someone has, um, once you've, you know, made a connection with someone, um, that's the first, their first impression of you. And um, if that first impression is not good, um, they're not as likely to come back to us and use us as a source of education. Um, we live in a competitive world. We all know that um, you know it's easy to go to Google or to YouTube and um, you know ask Google how to do something or YouTube how to do something or get our education from other sources. So if the, if we want to if Extension still wants to be seen as a relative source of information, um, you know we have to have a positive brand image um, because. If people don't use us, you know, that's a problem. So um, it's a competitive world out there. Um, no matter where you work at Extension, whether you're support staff or you're a researcher or um, a county Extension educator, um, we are the front line and the gatekeepers. And, um, you know, the first impression that we make says so much. And we're the heart and soul of branding at NDSU. Um, you know, while the tangible things are incredibly important, um, really the feeling that we provide when someone walks into our office and the connections that we make and the relationships that we establish um, really are the true branding that we do. You know, so many times I think that someone comes into the extension office because they just want to be heard. They just want to sit down and talk about, um, you know, even if they're coming in to drop off a soil sample, they still want to talk about market prices or what the weather's going to do or, um, you know, they establish that relationship with um, Extension as a whole. And so, um, you know, by having a positive branding experience and, and developing that positive relationship with those people, um, that's really what sells Extension in each of our counties and, and out in our communities. So that's why it's important. Um, the most important thing I know about branding are these three things, that it's consistent, um, that, you know, everything that we, from the, the intangible things, that we make sure that we're using the correct, um, you know, logos and, and that type of thing, you know, so that people can begin to, you know, associate when they see our logos or see our colors. They know exactly who we are and what we do. So it's consistent. It's on every single piece of information we put out there. It's persistent. It's all the time. It's not every other time or on some, you know, we don't, we just put our logo or just put up a sign or just wear our extension service shirt some of the time. We do it all the time. So it's persistent and it's genuine. Um, it's, you can't fake a relationship and you can't fake caring. And I know that our extension people are some of the most caring, um, genuine people in the world. And so, um, I know that, I know that we do a good job of those things. So consistency, persistent, and being genuine are the most important things I know about branding. Um, this is kind of the end of the presentation. Um, I welcome your questions. I will let you know that, like I said, our branding committee is continuing to work on some of these topics. Um, and um, we hope to have more in the future and keep providing you all with updates to our committee and, and ways that we can brand extension. Um, at this time, um, I welcome any of your questions. Um, Feedback, uh, this presentation will is being recorded and will be available on YouTube afterwards. So if you'd like to go back and reference anything, I um, you know, welcome you all to do that. Um, and please feel free to email me with any questions, um, comments, constructive criticism. I welcome it all. So thank you so much. And I'll be sure to, I'm not even sure what time it is right now, but um, I'll be sure to stay here on um, Skype for a while afterwards if anybody'd like to talk talk afterwards. So 
Looks like we've got some people joining in on the conversation. Alrighty. Thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, Glenn. I appreciate that. Thanks for joining us, Cindy. Thanks for your question, Kala. Um, you know, one of the things that we're that we definitely um, are doing, and like I said, we've started to do a, some infographics on Facebook, um, and we're making sure that um, everything that we put out. If you if you want to go check out the NDSU Extension Service Facebook pages, um, you know, past infographics. We're you know using extension colors, and we're making sure to always put our logo on that. Um, we even are trying to, um, you know, any photos that we put out there, you know, of course we can't do that when we're sharing someone else's content, but if we're creating original content, um, we make sure to put our logo even placed over the top of that photo so that if that photo gets shared by whether it's a county or, um, you know, an individual person or company, that if they share our image or share our post, that um, that go that our logo goes with it. So those are the things that we're kind of doing in terms of branding on Facebook. Um, one of the things I'd like for us to start doing, and I think it you know will take some time to kind of figure out you know our our social media strategy. But um, you know um, people are using of course hashtags for content creation, but I think they can also kind of be used for branding as well. I think um, National 4-H has seen that um, back in October when it was National 4-H Week, um, I can't remember the exact hashtag, but it was something, I think it was, I don't know if it was We Are 4-H or something like that, and you saw, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, sharing 4-H photos using that hashtag, and this is 4-H, perfect, thanks, Amelia. Um, and I thought that was neat, you know, it, it wasn't just content, um, you know, it wasn't just, the fact that you could click on that hashtag and go find other photos like that, I think it also kind of is branding as well because, um, you know, it, it allowed people to, um, you know, share their story or share an old photo or why 4-H, you know, why they were passionate about 4-H as well or why they supported 4-H. And so, okay, so they've got what right now, true leaders, Amelia says. So um, I think those are ways that... Um, you know, you could do some branding on your county Facebook page to, like I said, be sure to anything you put out there to, you know, have your county logo on it, but also maybe create some um, hashtags um, that could go along with some of the content that you do, especially if you're posting content consistently, like if you have a Fun Fact Friday or 4-H Friday or something like that, that's something that you could use a hashtag to brand that content um, as well. So. Hopefully that answers your question a little bit, Kala. Any other branding questions? That's a great message, Becky, to make sure that your social media postings reflects your office the way you want it to. One of the things I always try to think about when posting um, 
using the with NDSU Extension Services. And it's, it, it's not that way all the time. Sometimes we like to give shout outs to our, you know, staff that are doing great things. But, um, I always think as I'm, as I'm writing that post, is this educational? And where can I send them back to for more information? So whether that's to a publication, back to a website, um, to a YouTube video that we've produced, you know, how can I provide a little bit of information or education within the post itself? And then where can I link them back to for more information? And that's something that um, I always try to do no matter what um, we're posting on on Facebook or any of our other social media outlets. Tom, I see your message here. That's something that um, we'll take into, and Stacy agrees with that, take into consideration and um, maybe provide some alternate um, options for that so that make it a little more easy on the eyes to read. <laughs> Kelly, this is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi. And I guess the the green also it is when you copy it takes a lot of ink. And so it's expensive to print. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. And then I, I, I had to take a phone call but you were talking about pictures and putting our logo. Mm -hmm. Usually what I do is I put my name on any photos I take. But you know, if we put the logo on there, I guess do people crop that off? Is it legal for them to do that? How do we know where to put it? That's a great question. Um, technically, Becky, you might chime in on that. I, I think if it's an NDSU photo, I think credit has to, if, if someone, sh I mean, we all know in this day and age that things get shared all across Facebook and you never know where they came from or, you know, who is the original, um, you know, creator of that. But that's a good question. I'll, I'll need to find out a little more information. Betsy says if it's an NDSU photo, the metadata should say where it came from and would be copyrighted. That's what I was kind of thinking in terms of I was afraid copyright would come up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try to be the copyright queen here. But um, technically, the university attorney's ruling was that work done by extension people is part of your job. It's a work for hire, so NDSU owns it. Now, you know, you can say you own it, then that's fine. Um, but but we also follow the Creative Commons, which also was approved by the university attorney, that gives others permission to use our content as long as they give us credit for it and don't use it for commercial purposes, they don't make money off of it, and that they also share it with others. So those are kind of the three criteria for Creative Commons. So even with photos, if it's an NDSU photo, and we're trying to do a better job, as Kelly said earlier, of making, of, of identifying all the photos and publications and on websites and everything. And I would encourage you all to do that exact same thing, kind of what Jackie's talking about. Identify, credit your photos so then when somebody does use them, hopefully legally, they know who to give credit to.
So, Becky, it's an NDSU, if I take it, it's an NDSU photo, so then I should put NDSU on there and not my name? That is that what you're saying? It, it depends on the purpose. If it truly is work-related, personally, I don't put my name on my own photos. I just put NDSU because I want NDSU to get the credit rather than me. Okay. Well, I don't care who gets the credit. I just want to make sure that somebody does so that I know, yes. Yes. you know. In publications think, and things like that, especially some of the more technical ones that are shot with electron microscopes or something like that, we put specific names down. So if we have to, if because our office gets questions all the time about, hey, can I use that photo? And they need a high resolution version. They can't just steal it off the web. So we have to be able to go back and track down who has that and make sure we can use it. So with photos, Becky, this is Betsy. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So does NDSU automatically put their mat metadata in there like, as who as to who it is with the common license, or is that something that a person would have to do when they add the logo to it? I don't even know what you're talking about. I hate to admit. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was just curious about like the pictures you had sent on the the, um, the website that you had, you had responded to me. Those photos. Like, I, I think what Jackie was trying to get at is if the logo was actually cropped out of, off of there, are those photos, for example, if you download those photos, does the metadata inside those photos reflect that it is an NDSU common license, or is that not something that maybe NDSU has done yet? I don't think we've done that. Here in Agnum, okay. no, we haven't. Okay. Because that might be something you may want to consider um, from, like, a time point forward when you download the photos to um, put logos on or whatever to actually go into the metadata into fo from Photoshop or even actually in the camera when you actually take the photo. Uh -huh. That way um, it would automatically be a common license and you could put that in on the photo when it's been taken in the metadata. That okay. way you don't have an issue when if somebody does remove the logo, it will always be there. You can yeah. find it. Betsy just got herself onto the AgCom photo committee because we are, <laughs> just so you all know, we are trying to create our own gallery of, so we can even find the photos that we've taken, the ones that are in publications and websites and everything, to categorize those, similar to a Flickr site, but more internal, that you all will have access to once we populate it. I would love to be part of that because we have the same issue at NCI and I mean I even have my own issue in my own personal stuff so it's it's nice to be able to talk with other people on how we should do it. Great, thanks. You're in. <laughs> I had seen um I'll go back to some of the conversation along our in the uh chat bar um entertaining some different ideas for backgrounds and um, just want you to know Dr. Charlie and Stacy that uh, and Don we hear you and Mary we hear you and um, we'll definitely discuss that and see what our graphic designers could come up with yeah thanks to Sonia for finding that I knew we had that too on how to print so it doesn't use up all the ink as far as the actual style, we'll check with university relations, but mm -hmm. that's their guideline instead of blah, black and white, so we'll discuss it with them. Definitely. Any other questions about anything we've discussed today? Alrighty. Thank you again for your time, and like I said, I'll stay on for the next probably 10 minutes or so to take uh, any other questions or comments you all might have. So thank you again for joining us, and like I said, this will be available on YouTube um, shortly as well.